Uh, hi, good morning. Um, um, I'm Ming Fan, Linux System Software Engineer at ByteDance. My coworker Neil, which is a, who is the leader of the Cloud Framework Project at ByteDance, he's in Shanghai right now. Unfortunately, he cannot make it here today because of COVID. Uh, I will represent him for this speech, and I will do my best to answer any potential questions. If you want any further discussion, you are more than welcome to contact him after this presentation. His contact has been included in the follow-up uh, slideshow. Okay, uh, let's just uh, move on. Mm -mm, it's not working. <laughs> Yeah, so last year we also came here, my coworker Colm uh, shared the roadmap of our uh, Cloud Firmware project and the production of Cloud Firmware 1.0 with you guys. Today I'm going to share the story of Cloud Firmware with you again, uh, give you some updates on Cloud Firmware 1.0 and how we approach Cloud Firmware 2.0, as well as some like uh, detailed solutions. First of all, let's have an overview of Cloud Firmware to have a brief understanding of the big picture uh, and why we propose this solution. Uh, as we all know, firmware is a very first stage of uh, system booting up. However, the cost of uh, developing UEFI and BIOS is really high due to programming language limitation, which is assembly. It's really hard to hire qualified uh, like developers on market. Meanwhile, there are limited suppliers, which is a pain in ass as well. Also, firmware and operating system development are totally isolated from each other. Response time to address issues um, to vendors are really kind of like a, the, the response time is just really long. It's really opposite to the fast moving pace in internet companies nowadays. Based on all, all those facts, uh, there's an urge for new generation of booting mechanism to come up. But it's really hard to develop an alternative solution like from scratch. Luckily, we are still able to use an existing solution like a core boot to accommodate uh, simple use cases on cloud infrastructure, which uh, with the minimized uh, maintenance efforts. As cloud service provider, we deal with Linux and the open source daily. Utilizing diverse features of Linux and a well-maintained open source community first came to our site. Uh, if we can use core boot to replace um, traditional firmware, we don't need a specialties, but internal kernel developers to uh, develop our own booting solution, which is um, pretty um, efficient and uh, convenient, which makes things easier than modifying UEFI. Meanwhile, because uh, Cobalt is open source, the whole industry can contribute together and benefit together. Um, all silicon vendors can share the same solution and the source code, which makes the collaboration more efficient and upgrading faster as well. Also, since hardware has been developed over the past uh, decades, uh, the larger memory size and the flash size and more cores made a complex firmware solution a possibility. Multi-core and high CPU frequency can also compensate the latency of the complex solution. Based on all those facts, utilizing uh, Linux boot and uh, core boot to replace traditional booting mechanism turned out to be the trend. Uh, with this vision, it finally came to how we can um, achieve this goal. We believe small steps are the best way to achieve big goals. Instead of uh, jumping into the final solution directly, we broke the project into three steps, as you can see from the diagram here. Uh, which is a Cloud Firmware 1.0. Uh, this is a transitional phase. Cloud Firmware 2.0, uh, this is a final solution. And the 3.0, which is a platform compatible solution. I'm going to go through each step with you um, in detail later. So at the first stage, instead of uh, giving up on UEFI totally, we simplified Tiano into a lighter version with fundamental hardware initialization functions and offload some firmware functions like uh, NetBoot or BIOS setup in Linux boot, since they're not like uh, platform related. This also means we officially introduce uh, Linux ecosystem into traditional firmware product uh, development. So once the stage one is realized, we can move on to the next generation, which is dropping UEFI and migrating essential functions to core boot. And this will be final solution for a new generation of booting mechanism. Uh, from this point, the whole system is clean from traditional firmware, and right now we're at um, Cloud Firmware 
Eventually, we also want to develop a more uh, general code boot, Linux boot package to be compatible with different platforms so that uh, all the companies can use this solution, which is Cloud Firmware 3.0. To achieve this goal, we actually need uh, the joint efforts from the whole industry. We're more than willing to embrace your collaboration. Let's just uh, brainstorm together. I also want to share with you that the reason for us to call this solution Cloud Firmware is it's designed for cloud infrastructure. We wanted to develop an alternative firmware solution, but it doesn't mean we need to copy and paste the features from traditional firmware blindly. We analyze the scenarios we use as cloud service or provider, summarize the fundamental features we need, utilize our ability to, uh, of a full stack development and end to end development ability, uh, and started from there. With simple use cases and high volume, we're able to use, uh, use minimize the functions in Core Boot and Linux Boot to replace UEFI with a more valuable outcome. So once the framework is done, uh, we, due to the flexibility of Linux Boot and the Core Boot, we can actually add more features and functions as needed. Eventually, we want to use our cloud firmware solution as a touchstone to start a new era of booting for the whole industry. We believe, in, uh, we believe with joint efforts, a more universal and uh, reliable booting solution can be developed. Yeah, so this will be the brief uh, background introduction of the whole uh, Cloud Firmware project. Uh, so after refreshing our memory, let's talk about the status of the first generation of Cloud Firmware um, project, which is a live version Tiano plus uh, Linux boot. So this solution was on production uh, last September. It has been applied to 2,500 systems in our data center. Uh, we haven't found any issues so far. It's mainly using HTTP boot, which significantly improved the success rate of uh, OS installation, especially in restoration. Previously, uh, with UEFI PCI driver, that was mainly used for OS installation. But once the network volume is high, uh, there's a good chance for the driver to be hung which caused a headache to operation maintenance. With Linux boot, once restoration failed, we could use a BMC to load a Linux boot and finish restoration. The reliability and efficiency are high. This made us realize how we can benefit from Linux boot in operation maintenance perspective. Overall, the success of a cloud firmware 1.0 uh, one proved to us that we're on track and it's time to extend core boot to the host uh, system to, uh, and finally, a production on quantum service platform, which is Cloud Firmware Generation 2. Now let's move on to um, the status update of Cloud Firmware 2.0. I will go through the architecture, collaboration, Linux boot and the core boot features we've included, as well as the status updates and uh, over the next few slides. So as I mentioned earlier in Cloud Firmware 2.0, we finally use a, uh, replace UEFI with Core Boot. It will be on production together with Intel Eagle Stream Platform official time to market. Our Core Boot Cloud Firmware solution has been open source to OSF team and uploaded to the code base. In order to support uh, booting on server platforms, we enhance features in, Core Boot, in existing Core Boot code base as well as Linux boot. Next, I'm going to go through details of uh, uh, Cloud Firmware 2.0 with you which includes uh, how the collaboration works, what kind of features we have included in both uh, Core Boot and uh, Linux Boot. Yeah, uh, this uh, Cloud Firmware is a big picture. We can never achieve whatever we have today without the help and insight from other institution. This is a diagram uh, demonstrates us uh, how cooperation works well between uh, Bydance and other vendors. The grid blocks means uh, yeah, the gray box means uh, this is not like uh, owned, and the active block with uh, color, which means um, participation. So um, as you can see from here, uh, as you can see from the diagram, CoBoot was developed by uh, Bydance, Inspire, and Intel all together. We all worked together to align the features and the needs. Intel also shared a part of the silicon code with us. Uh, we, can, uh, we provide a feedback to Intel as well so that hardware can behave as firmware expected. This end-to-end -end working model made the development of Core Boot uh, really efficient. 
in-band flash update in core boot, I'm going to share later, prove us this point. Since Linux boot is a pure software and is not related with the silicon, Bidance internally owns uh, the whole Linux boot source code to meet our own business requirement. Different companies can also customize their own uh, Linux boot, uh, just like how they develop, develop their own kernel. But we did, we did share the features we've developed and the problems we've made during the development to OSF and open source the configuration file so that uh, all can benefit from our experience. The whole solution has also been contributed back to OCP OSF group. We will also like uh, a special thanks to Meta, Google, WeWing for the collaboration. Okay, uh, let's just uh, work through the improvement we made in Linux boot next. In Cloud Firmware 1.0, Linux boot was only used one traditional boot field. Both booting mechanisms run simultaneously. In Cloud Firmware 2.0, Linux boot will be enforced for all booting. We, uh, we also migrated a few more features from UEFI to Linux boot if the features are not related with the silicon configuration, which includes uh, out of band management, uh, uh, like uh, boot booting order management, inventory, and the variable management, as well as video graphic array. So among all those features, I'd love to share a little more of the out-of-band management solution. Out-of-band management offers a way to update variables, system configuration, and booting order through intelligent platform management interface uh, and Redfish. The benefit of out-of-band um, management is users don't need, a power on, don't need to power on the machines and reconfigure manually, but manage a large number of systems uh, simultaneously through Redfish and uh, IPMI. Users utilize BMC to update the variable in Uroot. Once power on, once system power on, OS variable will be updated automatically. So this is actually uh, super convenient for um, operation maintenance. So after talking about the features we covered in Linux boot, uh, let's continue with core boot features in Cloud Firmware 2.0. So this is a platform uh, this diagram is actually the platform initialization firmware faces from the Coreboot official website. We contributed a few features based on needs and the Coreboot specification. We updated a lot of features on ACPR table in order to achieve Coreboot production. We also upgraded uh, system management BIOS from 3.0 to 3.5 to cover more features. Tool to realize the flash in-band update is also developed. We also supported a multi-socket ROS solution and a dynamic control post message level for better debugging experience. Uh, among all those uh, core boot patches we have been uploaded to OSF workspace, you are more than welcome to check. Besides the system management BIOS was uh, updated from uh, version 3.0 to 3.5, um, for better feature coverage, we also added a new type, system power supply, as well as improvement on existing features like uh, processor information, cache information, memory device, and memory array mapped address, so that we can achieve better system information management. Yeah, so among all those uh, new features, I want to highlight our approach to flashing band update with internal OS tool, which is a ByteDance update BIOS. In the past, Flash ROM uh, uh, could only update partial Flash because uh, there are two reasons. The first is uh, Intel management engine is locked. Uh, the second one is the OS configuration doesn't allow update. As we mentioned before, Cloud Firmware involves a collaborative working model between ByteDance and vendors to achieve an end-to-end -end solution. We were able to use the SMI flow to trigger system management code in Core Boot to unlock uh, Intel ME and realize upgrading. Besides the uh, Intel ME, only part of the flash could be updated if OS enabled config IO strict uh, def man. Because we developed our own kernel, our ByteDance update BIOS tool could bypass this limitation and update the whole flash. So uh, that will be all the project status update and the features we've covered. So uh, now let's just uh, share a little bit more about our current uh, development status. As you can see from the timeline, 
We plan on development and validation before production. Right now, all the system and features development have been done, and uh, we have finished the first round of validation. All of the 110 issues we found, only 20 bugs remain, and they won't block the production. The final round of uh, validation before production is still in progress, and there's no getting issues found. We will definitely keep you posted. Okay, uh, that will be all I want to share with you today. If you have any follow-ups, please feel free to contact Neil. This is his uh, email address. Um, we would also like to thank OCP OSF members for the great cooperation, especially thanks to Intel, uh, Meta, Google, AWS, Inspire, and WeWin for the great collaboration. We are also looking forward to more cooperation to build a cloud ecosystem with all of you. Yeah, thank you so much. That will be all I want to cover today. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Sure. The 2,500 servers that you mentioned, is that one platform or is it multiple platforms, different models? It's just a single platform. Uh, so we can only achieve uh, like a cross-platform support at CloudFormer 3.0. So as, I'm, uh, as I always mentioned, uh, we always uh, want to start with a simple solution to make uh, the whole framework uh, up and around. That's the starting point to expand and uh, add uh, more compatibility. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Beautiful, thank you, nice work. Sure, uh, thank you. When you say platform, it might have been different. Uh, Silicon, I think. Intel, was it? Uh, uh, like a risk five or yeah. something like that. When he refers, when he refers to, to the actual server, uh, different type of server. That's right, yeah, I, I, was, yeah, I was just asking, is it all the same server? Is it, is it exactly the same server, 2500, or it's different? You know, one socket, two socket? Oh, uh, that part, I'm not sure. Maybe you can contact Neil to follow more clarification. Okay. Yeah, right. sure. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification, yeah. Okay, thank you.